Oh, here and, it comes. Uh, this is the exciting part. Oh, you can smell it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like? Do you like that? In the air, Cora. Okay, you're not a very good co-host. <laughs> oh, in the ear. <laughs> Welcome to the Ten Acre Woods. My name's Mark, my wife Tara, and our cat, our needy cat, Coda. So today we're gonna to talk about the distiller we received from Vevor. Uh, so this video is sponsored in part by Vevor, uh, which uh, has a bunch of neat things that Tara's run across. Yes. Uh, yeah. So take it away. How do we uh, how do we work this right. thing, well, Tara? So it is an alcohol distiller, uh, first and foremost. So it comes with instructions and with a lot of nice recipes for alcohol. However, we don't drink, so these are useless to me. <laughs> but they're very good if you were distilling alcohol. But there's nothing for oils in here. And just to point out, it is illegal here to distill, to distill your own alcohol. <laughs> Uh, the uh, so this the setup comes with um, the main pot and then it comes with a thumper pot which would go in here in line and then the cooling and then you cool it and it comes out and you're um, we're using it for essential oils so your essential oils and your hydrosol will come out here um, so I'm just gonna start at the beginning and kind of go through it so I started with orange we're gonna do oranges, Tian, one of Tiana's favorites is the, the citrus family oils. So all your orange peels, um, when you peel the oranges, throw them in the freezer, throw them in the freezer, keep, keep your orange peels. And then when you get an, enough, then you can uh, blend them up. And what that does is it just breaks it down so that more oil can be released and it's not uh, stuck in the, the peel. So it'll be able to release. Uh, it's about half orange peel and half water just to get it so it blended easier and then we're going to add it into our large pot right here I don't want to splash it hang on whoops let me hold that <laughs> good job okay So we're gonna add that in there. And of course, if you boil that, it's just gonna burn. So we're gonna add Now this is the cooling system, right? Yeah, I'll go through all that and I'm gonna add some hot water. Make it into now there's different ways you can we want a nice base so that it uh, doesn't stick to the bottom in there. Uh, if you were doing plants, like we'll, I'll do a lot more once I have a garden to pull plants from. And then what you would do is, it didn't come with this, but we kind of made a base so that the plants would sit on here and not the, not the bottom of the uh, pan here. That's enough. Just enough that you know it's not gonna like burn to the bottom of it. And then you want to seal it up. This one comes with a really nice thermometer on it, so you want you can regulate and get it to a, t a boiling, and then uh, turn down your heat and keep it at the same temperature. Um, I think it's 112 degrees Fahrenheit. 110. Yeah, two, right around 98 wait, degrees Celsius. 210. Or 210. 210. Yeah, and so when the plants, obviously the plant, the raw plant matter will sit all up here and the water will boil underneath. There's diff two different ways that you can pull the oils out of stuff. You can either do a submerged boil, which this would be considered or you can do a steam where you boil the water in the bottom, steams through all the plant matter, and that pulls it. So there's two different ways that I've researched that you can do it. So now we're going to turn this on, get it kind of started. 
boiling. We had to offset it off of the element so that the heat had an escape or else this vibrated on the uh, element because it's a flat top. Okay, so then we're gonna come over here and I've got my cold water in the sink and then we're going to plug it in. This is a, we, we kind of tested it. Whoa, whoa, spitting everywhere. <laughs> whoa, because <laughs> it's filling. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is the cold water, whereas the steam, when the steam comes through, it'll cool in that copper tube and then come down and drip through the pipe here. Now this was tricky because once it gets to a certain height, Yeah, you have to basically adjust this valve on the bottom here and leave this one fully open and kind of get it to a point where it's flowing in at a point where it's nicely flowing out and not overflowing. Not overflowing the edge of the pot. Okay, so we're all set up now. Um, it kind of it went way too high and we had to shut it off to kind of get it down. So now we've got it going nicely where it... Uh, is exiting as it's entering out here into the sink. We had to adjust the little wobble on the, but it's very easy to use. I was more, I was shocked at how, e you know, you look at the setups and it's like, oh wow. But it's actually really easy to use. I'm looking forward to really getting to know how to use it and trying different stuff come spring, summer, when I can gather plants from outside. I did learn the last time, like I did a trial with catnip and uh, we did it in a large jar and got as much as I could. No, you just want the first 30 minutes. From what I can tell, the first 30 minutes has the most, new, most uh, beneficial hydrosol and oil. And we'll show you that once we get that in there. That's been uh, eight minutes and we've seen our first drip of condensation coming through. Condensation, is that what it's, yeah. Condensation, so uh, if you watch here, this'll, it's a little off level, but you'll see our first drops coming in to the jar. It'll be, yeah, condense, condensing. Goes yeah. into, uh, from a liquid a to a gas. Yeah. And then from a gas, uh, condenses back into a liquid. So I can see it forming here. I keep knocking over my jar though. <laughs> it's all about having the right size jars. So 30 minutes, it's currently 143. So we want to go half an hour. So 113. Oh, 213. Trying to get this down lower. Oh, did that. Yeah, when it makes that noise, yeah. uh, it's sucking in air. You can see here. So that means you've got it set right. <laughs> because uh, oh, it is. You missed uh, it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Oh, here comes another. Oh. Because it's flowing out. Oh, here and, it comes. Uh, this is the exciting part. Oh, you can smell it. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It's just amazing when you can take like orange peels, which you would throw out unless you're using it in your cooking, and you can utilize it. So this, this will also be really good for, um, if you were to take, to take the oil and you can add it to a carrier oil and then use it in your cooking and whatnot for uh, extra scents and flavors. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to see how much. I Originally I had cut up the whole orange. You know, you learn as you go. And then I was doing a little research and I'm like, it's all in the peel. So <laughs> I just took all the peels 
because of course it's less product, less boiling, right? And uh, the grinding up just makes total sense because then it doesn't take as long for it to pull those oils out of it because it's tinier pieces. Now your hydrosol is going to be on the bottom, your oil is going to be on the top, right? Yes. Oh, right. look at that flow. Yeah. Oh. It's like, look at it. It's yeah. like whole. It's awesome. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. oh old man. Um, okay, so we are now letting it clear and cool. And uh, it'll clear up. It did the other day, so I'm hoping this one will too. And uh, then we'll touch base with the amount of oil. You can, it looks like there's about half an inch up there so far. That bottle may be deceiving. So uh, we'll see. All right, so uh, next morning we uh, kind of let it settle overnight. It didn't clear as much as the catnip. The catnip went totally clear. Um, so I took a syringe with the needle and I sucked the oil off the top. And what's nice is if you get water, the hydrosol in the needle as well, it's a great way you can clear it as well. So then I let the needle sit and we ended up with a total probably three, three and a half mils of the orange extract. So that's about, about $10 worth of uh, orange oil out of something that you would have thrown in the garbage anyways. Uh, so start throwing it in your freezer and uh, you learn to utilize it in different ways. Uh, if you are interested in this product or any of the other products that Fever has, uh, you can check the links below and you'll get a 5% discount off of their products. And Now the hydrosol also um, you don't want to write off because that's beneficial yes. as well. Yeah, it has a shorter, shorter shelf life. Um, any of the hydrosols, depending on um, how much debris or whatnot it is, you want to store it in the fridge and it can last up to eight, eight months in the fridge. Uh, you can use it in your cooking, you know, um, that kind of stuff. It's still got all the scents. It's got a lot of the nutrients of the plant or the orange peel, like I said, is still a plant in it. And then the oil, they say typically doesn't have a shelf life. Um, but you always want to watch your, your clear bottle. You want to store them in dark bottles and in cooler places. Well, it's a beautiful day. Uh, cool. It's warming up. That's nice. Spring's on its way. So we're just going to do a little uh, animal update here and see how everybody's faring. Levi, Meadow. Hi. Hey time. Breakfast. <laughs> Sounds like Billy is, uh, oh, there he is there. Morning, Billy. Oh yeah, doing his thing. Come on, kids. Come and get it. Put the rest in there outside. It's gonna be sunny today. Fluffy, Billy. Oh, he's got, I he's know. glistening. He's glistening. Did you put some cologne on? <laughs> oh, Billy. You stinky. Yeah. You stinky. temperatures. Morning Cora. Morning Cora. 
How are we doing today, girl? Yeah, <laughs> get that itch. Oh, there you go. Oh, nothing like a good scratch under the chin. Yes. <laughs> How's the piggies doing? How's the little piggies doing? You need to clean up your poop? Well, they're not too bad, but they're, they kind of got some poop scattered around. All right, so I cleaned off, cleaned off the ice. <laughs> that looks much better. Now we can see their faces. All right, enough's enough, I guess. We'll let them in. <laughs> Come on, Petey. All right, there we go. No, no spitting this morning, kids. And yes, I'm looking at you, Juanita. How's everybody doing out here? Morning Turbo. <laughs> Got a nice fluffy coat on. George. No, that's not George. Oh, that's uh, JJ. JJ's got a little tough on her head like George. Uh, there's Tinker. There's Willow. And that should be George there. Tinker, isn't it? Yeah, it's George. He's yeah. tough. Yeah. <laughs> I guess they're all starting to get tufts now uh, as their wool gets longer. Wow, eh? <laughs> and Bronwyn. It's so warm in there, too. Yeah. Yeah, nice wool coat. Later! All right, Bye. breakfast is over. Come again. Hey. Hope you enjoyed your stay. <laughs> and the pigs are always the last ones to come out. Katie's blocking Paula. Oh. There you go. Bye, Paula. Hola. Bye, Jabba. Come on, Petey. Yeah, the oh, pigs hi. have to kind of wander slowly through the aisle and make sure they get all the all the grains and, and food that's fallen. And then he'll come out and root around, look for some morsels out here. Piper takes forever. Yeah, Piper. Piper! Piper! <laughs> Come on! Let's go! Come on! Uh, she needs a little bit of coaxing sometimes. Come on! Move your bum! <laughs> Bye! I'll get you water. Cora, you want to give everybody a kiss? Oh, there it is! There you go, you got a Cora kiss. <laughs> oh, Tara needs one too. <laughs> that dog is so I long! Know, it is. Cora, <laughs> it's rough too. Hi, sweetie. Uh, I love you. So <laughs> uh, Pea fowl. So the feathers are coming in nicely here. Okay, what's all the noise? No noise. Hey, we're good. <laughs> oh, these guinea fowl. Yeah, so uh, feathers are uh, getting quite long. I don't know what's up with this one here. Kind of missing some eyes in the mid uh, section. That could be, yeah, a younger boy. So we figure, I think this one over here is the, is the dad? Yeah. I think it's this one. It's either that one or that one. Yeah. It actually, ah, it's hard to say. Well, this one's thicker. The one on the left is thicker. Yeah. Thicker leg, whoops. Yeah, someone didn't make it up. <laughs> Thump. <laughs> oh my God, this is... <laughs> Cora, you want to help me with this? You got a cow lick. <laughs> I got a, I got a cow lick. She's giving you a cow lick. Yeah. <laughs> do you like, do you like that? In the ear, Cora. Okay, you're not a very good co-host. Oh, in the ear. <laughs> oh. Anyway, uh, that's it for this video. I am heading off to um, Alberta, Calgary, 
and then into the Rockies, as I mentioned last video. So my flight leaves a little bit later today, so I'll get this uh, video all done up and out to you all. And I'll uh, wish you a uh, wonderful week, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.